We're going to tackle the next two sort of um, in sequence, but we're popping ahead to principle six for those of you who've memorized the future of the American board framework. <laughs> Uh, strategy and risk. Uh, governance structures and practices should support the board as adaptive and agile, focused on strategy and risk, and prepared to take appropriate action in a crisis. Um, we want to spend really meaningful time on this topic about risk management, identification, assessment, monetization, ref monitorization, and refining, and thinking about more than just enhanced scenario planning, but really weaving and integrating in to risk management into your business and into your strategic plan, back to your corporate purpose. Uh, James? This is an area that uh, you've spent your life. <laughs> so by, by natural design, we're going to ask you to kick us off here. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, so when I started my consulting practice 21 years ago, I did an empirical research. And I asked the question, when public companies get into trouble, as defined by a 30% or more value decline relative to the S&P 500, why? And it turns out, over 20 years, 60% of the time is due to strategic risk, 30% of the time was due to operational risk, and 10% of the time was due to financial risk. So to me, the integration of strategy and risk is one of the most important things that uh, a board is going to pay attention to. And throughout the uh, Blue Ribbon Commission report, there's a lot, lot of mention and reference to strategy, risk, and talent, right? So, so those are the three core um, areas for boards to, to think about. And um, to me, uh, if you want to really tease out uh, strategy and strategic risk, there are five key questions that you could ask on an integrated basis. So the first thing to consider is any risk is a bell curve, and it might have different shapes and sizes, right? There's an expected performance, there's some underlying risk that could drive performance for the better or worse. And the five questions I would ask is one, what is your objective? What are you trying to accomplish as a, as a business over the next two, three, five years? Just give me a paragraph in terms of what are we trying to accomplish in terms of strategy? The second question is, what are the KPIs, the key performance indicators, that would tell us whether we are accomplishing our objectives? Right? Third question is, what are the underlying risks? And it could be strategic risks, operational risks, financial risks, that could drive performance for the better or worse. Right, kind of given that variability in performance. The fourth question is, what are the KRIs that could measure these risk levels? And what's our risk appetite for those risks that are critical to the company? And the fifth question, which I think is the most important question, is how do we provide integrated reporting? And we're going to talk about reporting later. Mm -hmm. And how do we make better decisions? How do we act on it? so that we could optimize the performance of the company. What I find dysfunctional at many companies, and you, you might recognize this, is that questions one and two are addressed separately than three and four. So one and two might be done by corporate development and strategy group, FPNA. Three and four is done by audit or risk management and they get reported to different committees, and now you just separated strategy and risk. That doesn't make sense. You've dissected the bell curve. So it's really important to integrate those five questions. And I would um, you know, ask you to consider you know, asking that, those questions for the corporate strategy, or it could be a business strategy, or it could be a digital strategy. And for you to have those, um, questions answered on an integrated basis and have good content, I think it goes a long way in integrating strategy and risk management. Nora? 
Do you want a rebuttal to that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> any any comments? Any, uh, any no? I think it's uh, I think it's huge, and I think that um, and you have to make sure. I was somehow my compensation mind went to the metrics of yeah. aligning the, the strategy, then it then the structure, then yeah. select the talent, and then the metrics and rewards. If those are lined up, then you have much less risk of an operational operational problem. Yeah. So I think. Um, then I, I was really pained by, we have that same problem on two of my boards where the top two are done by the other two. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think, that, I think metrics is so important. Yeah, yeah. Because KPIs are lagging indicators. You right. really can't control them. The KRIs are the leading indicators that you could really control and shape. I'll give you a simple example, right? So, you know, it's the beginning of the year. Right? People make New Year, res New Year resolutions. One of the most common ones, get in shape. Okay, okay. So question one, I want to get in shape. Question two, how do you measure that? Well, maybe BMI, the body mass index. Right? I, I want to be within that range. Question three, what are the risks? Well, one of them is you don't exercise enough. What was, what's one KRI? Well, how much you exercise. I want to work out most days for at least 30 minutes to an hour. And number five, what are you going to do? I'm going to track my metrics. I'm going to work out with a personal trainer. Well, number two, the, K, the, the body mass index, you can't control it. You could wish it's going to be a certain rate. You can't do anything about it. Question four, you could get up and go to the gym. And same thing as a business. If you're just measuring performance as a board, there's really very little you could discuss or decide on, right? So I think that's why it's really important. So you're telling me I should measure your activity. So instead of an outcome-based, I should say how many times you went to the gym? You want both. Oh? That's the feedback loop, right? You can't just do one without the other. Okay. So activity doesn't mean results. Right. You want right. both. You really want both, and that's, okay. that's a feedback loop. Okay, excellent. Build on that and tell us what the risks are. How would you identify, assess, monitor the risks to that strategic goal of a better BMI, which isn't the right goal, right? Yeah, I, I think it's really what are you trying to accomplish? What, what are your performance metrics, whether it's earnings, uh, value, or some you know, ESG goal that you want? And, and then you could say, well, what are the underlying drivers for those risks in terms of making things for the better or worse. And one of the problems that I see also is how people define risk, right? We, yeah. we talked about, you know, at one of your organizations, you know, some people, and I see this in many places, is, is defined as compliance, right? Or it could be defined as some, mm. some loss that we don't want or some negative events. Well, if you define risk as some loss and negative events, What's the logical extension of that? We want to minimize it. Yeah. We want to minimize risk. Well, that's not true. You don't want to minimize all risk because certain risks allow you to meet your business objective, allow you to pursue opportunity. So risk can't be defined simply as the negative, but are the underlying drivers that could make performance better or worse. Some are internal, some are external, some are controllable and some are not. But you really have to identify them and, and then measure them. Yep, uh, what I was sharing with James, he's referring to here uh, in, a, in a previous conversation, I said to him, I, I frequently see my boards focusing a lot and reporting to the board, the management team reports to the board about their success in compliance. They show me all the grades sure. they got from the investigations and they show me how they've filed all their reports on time and they've met all their uh, air quality restrictions or, or whatever they do in their operations. And, and we all sit there and say, okay, whew, we've managed risk. That is simply compliance. That is your license to do business, right? Yeah. That has nothing to do with the risks of doing your business and the metrics that, that James is talking about. And I think it's important for us at the board to have clarity between compliance and risks. And I think you have to be, you have to just ask the hard questions and say, okay, thank you so much for this wonderful discussion on compliance. It's an important part of measuring how we do business and our license to do business. Now tell me about what gets us to making our strategy or missing our strategic right. goals. 
So I, I think it's really important, the clarifying point there. Um, let's talk a little bit about scenario analysis. <laughs> That's you. So um, I was on the Blue Ribbon Commission report on disruptive risk yes. with, with Nora. So one of the recommendations is to do scenario analysis. And I think the disruptive risk that we all face today, when, like the pandemic, geopolitical conflicts, climate change, we don't have a lot of data. We don't have a lot of models. We, we can't look backwards and say, how do we manage these disruptive yeah. risks? So it's really important to think about scenario analysis. And I'll give you a very specific example. Um, there was a healthcare supply chain company, and I've never had this experience before. They hired me to do ERM. They hired McKinsey to do strategy and told us about it after the fact and said, <laughs> we want you to work together on scenario analysis. Right, so, so, um, so the strategy part provides the outside in. So the first step is, you know, what, what's the competitive position of the company, what's happening in the marketplace, outside in. The risk part's the inside out. So how would these things impact our earnings, our value, our cash flows, and our business uh, objectives? Then developing a set of scenarios, right? Um, McKinsey likes three. Other companies go up to 10, but you might start with 10 and then narrow it down to three. What I think is really important is to have positive and negative scenarios. So one question could be, what scenario would increase our market value 10x in the next three to five years? On the other hand, what scenario would bankrupt the company? And, and, and consider, consider that, right? So, so then you have a set of scenarios uh, very importantly, some early warning indicators that said this, uh, these scenarios are happening. And then also some action triggers and strategies in reacting and responding to how things are changing and making sure that these metrics, the market intelligence, the scenarios are part of the board reporting and dashboards. So it's not just an annual exercise, but it becomes part of the, the board agenda. Okay. We're going to build on strategy and risk with a really important how component. And what I mean by this is if principle six, which is around strategy and risk, is the what, mm -hmm. we want to talk a little bit about the how, right? You need to be able to go back to the boardroom with the tools to kind of start the execution on your oversight of strategy and risk. And for us, that really comes in principle four, agenda and information. Mm -hmm. So let me read you that, uh, that principle. Governance structures and practices should be designed to support the board in determining its own priorities, agendas, information needs, and to assist the board on focusing on priority issues. Um, both of you are passionate about this one. <laughs> well, of the 10 principles, I would say this one is probably the least sexy, right? Yeah. <laughs> agenda and, and information, information yeah. right? But, but to me, it, it's probably one of the most important. Uh, one is because it shapes how the board spends its time, its valuable time. And two is the kind of information that is going to be provided to the board. And I'm a strong believer that the quality of information, the reports, the metrics that go to the board, has a big influence on the quality of oversight, decision making, and discussions, right? And so I'm gonna give you three key takeaways. One was the five questions. And this one is, is what I've seen in terms of information that goes to the board. And um, just a little bit of warning. I, I, uh, I, was, I grew up in Brooklyn. So I, I talk straight. This is the part where I'm gonna take off my gloves. <laughs> And, and it's, Grab your pencils. And, and, and it's really frustrating. And I, I would ask you if you, you recognize this. So I have three golden rules in terms of board information and reporting. And, and it's the boards that I serve on and also of the clients that I work with. First is don't do stupid. <laughs> Two is don't do lazy. And three is don't do boring. 
Okay. So let me start with don't do stupid. Now, when you guys uh, look at board reporting, um, how many have you seen like risk assessments and heat maps? Raise your hands. Okay. I would say 80, 90% of companies do risk assessments and heat maps, right? So you get in the room, you list all the risks that you, you could think of, and then you rank them one to five, <clears throat> lowest to highest in terms of probability, one to five in terms of severity, and you multiply the two scores to get your total risk score. Sounds reasonable, but when you think about it, that is so stupid, <laughs> all right? So remember we said risk is a bell curve, okay? A bell curve is a vector of probabilities and severities. Think about oil prices, right? Gas prices, energy prices. There's a small probability that prices will go up a lot or, you know, both ways, right? Go up or down a lot. And there's high probability there's gonna be small changes. Every risk is like that, it's not a single point. And let me tell you an example, okay? So the probability and severity of your company experiencing a cyber attack that you're able to block, probability is high. It happens thousands, tens of thousands of times a day. So five. The severity is low, it's a one. Five times one, it's a five. What's the probability and severity of a major data breach? The probability is low. One. 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 Severity is five. five. One times five is five. a five. So if I'm telling you, there's a methodology, <laughs> you feed in the highest risk and the lowest risk, and it's going to give you the same score. What are you going to say? That is stupid, exactly. <laughs> OK? And I'm not cherry picking the example. I could give you example after example when it comes to strategic financial operational risk. It gives you the wrong answers. And people check the box, they do it annually, and, and you know, pretty reports. You know, I, I get really frustrated. You know, they, they call that risk management. Okay, so, so don't do stupid. I, I, I don't stand for that on the boards that I work with or the clients. Two is don't do lazy. Lazy is describing risk as non-performance of a business objective. And you read this a lot in 10K reports. We want to do X, 20% market share, increased margin. The risk is that we, we're not going to do it, <laughs> that we're going to miss it. <laughs> that is lazy thinking, right? So like IT, right? Our, our objective is to maintain uptime 99% of the time or 99.99%. What's the risk? Downtime. <laughs> that, you, you see that a lot. But what happens is if you're measuring non-performance, you're not measuring the leading indicators. You know, that is being lazy. And the real risk. Lazy and Yeah, stupid. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're kind of related. <laughs> they're cousins. They're kind of cousins, right? Yeah. The, the risks are really the underlying conditions and variables that could lead to non-performance. And, and you have to go deeper. And, and so don't, don't be lazy. The third is don't be boring. And you've all seen this too. In a board reports from audit or risk management that says we have all these initiatives and we're 70% done, 80% done. And I think that's so boring. You know, I don't want to spend my time listening to you about how you spend your time. I, I want, I, I'm going to assume you're doing good work. Tell me the insights. Tell me what are the critical issues that I should focus on. Not tell, not tell me how you make sausage or how you do your work. So those are my three golden rules. And if you could take away the time and resources from doing things that are stupid, lazy, and boring, and do more of the things that we're talking about, integrating strategy and risk, and scenario analysis, I think you know, companies would be so much better off.